Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Solara Active Pharma Sciences Limited Q3 FY24 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participants' line will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Abhishek. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thanks, Manusha. A very good afternoon to all of you and thank you for joining us today for Solara Active Pharma Sciences Earnings Conference Call for the third quarter and nine months ended financial year 2024. Today we have with us Arun, Solara's founder, Purvank, MD and CEO, and Mr. Raghavendra Rao, CFO, to share the highlights of the business and financials for the quarter. I hope you have gone through our results release in the quarterly investor presentation, which have been uploaded on our website as well as on the website. The transcript for this call will be available in a week's time on the company's website. Please know that today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in relation to the risk pertaining to our business. After the end of this call, in case you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to the investigation team. I now hand over the call to Purvan to make uh, to Arun to make the opening remarks. Thank you, thank you, Abhishek. Uh, thank you all for joining us, Tim. And uh, it's not it's not normal for me to be on a call uh, related to Solara as we, as a family, have been invested in this company. Having said that, uh, we have taken several decisions across companies that we own, both listed and unlisted, to take very significant operative roles. Consequently, uh, and consequent to the fact that we have announced uh, a, a very difficult quarter results, including a very promising research strategy, I thought it uh, appropriate for me to be leading this call. So I have with me, as Abhishek rightly said, my colleagues, Purvang um, and Raghavendra Rao, who is our CFO. Um, so before I start, uh, uh, I must say that Q4 um, has been, uh, sorry, Q3 has been difficult. Um, we have had uh, a fairly strong track record on compliance and safety. Uh, unfortunately, we had a fire incident uh, caused by a freak uh, accident uh, in our Pondicherry plant, which is our main state plant, and that resulted in a significant uh, impact, a temporary impact of our business. Uh, unfortunately for us, it also resulted in uh, two, critical, uh, two precious loss of lives, uh, although the company has done everything that it should do uh, in these circumstances, we are still obviously uh, concerned about what, what impacts that these, uh, these, this issue has caused to families. I'm also glad to confirm that everybody else who have been injured have been have, have fully recovered and, and have been rehabilitated either in the company or through other operations. Um, and uh, we, uh, we, we work very diligently with the regulators, um, both from the regulators from the licensing standpoint, but also from the safety standpoint. And uh, we were able to uh, get permissions to restart manufacturing in Pondicherry, uh, considering that we, we, we kind of diversified our product uh, customer base, in, especially in ibuprofen post-COVID, uh, to an emerging market play which was not so strategic, uh, we were able to move inventories that we have had uh, in stock to ensure that our regular 15, 20-year-old long-standing big pharma customers were not impacted. So consequently, um, this, this quarter uh, has got two big events. One is obviously related to the fire and the adjustments around that. And, and also, uh, after we have taken this decision to take an active strategic role and an operational role, uh, helping the management or guide them or mentor and guide the management to get to uh, very significant outcomes, uh, we have completed several iterations on how we should be conducting our business and how do we get back to our historical 20 odd percent EBITDA business. Uh, running an EBITDA business in the last two years at single-digit EBITDA is not sustainable and is not desirable. 
Um, so we, we, we put our heads together and we've come with uh, a very significant reset uh, where we expect Solara to get back within the next five quarters to where uh, to its historic highs in terms of gross margins and EBITDA. And we are very confident of doing that in a very organized manner. Uh, as a result of this, we have taken very aggressive provisioning uh, of various uh, receivables that we may think, uh, which are during the COVID era, which we think uh, are, are doubtful. Uh, we don't, we are not yet ready to provide, uh, to write, write off any of them, but while we still work with these parties to get paid, uh, it's, a fun it's, it's a function of adequate caution and precaution that we have taken so that the reset is not impacted by any further one-off events. Consequently, several line items have been articulated in a detailed uh, deck, uh, which explains the, uh, the impacts of our reset. Um, of course, uh, Abhishek and the rest of the team will be more than happy to address specific questions that on the line items, but I would now want to pivot the conversation to what we think uh, would be an exciting new Solara uh, in the next few quarters. Uh, first of all, uh, we, have, we are now confident enough to guide uh, that within the end of next financial year, uh, we would get back to a historical 20 to 22% EBITDA run rate, uh, which is what we used to achieve uh, in FI21 FI and 22. This will come through, and, and like I said, the Q3 was a one-off situation, so we have guided back. For a, for a reasonably strong Q4 at 400 crores of revenues, but we are still not happy with the EBITDA that we achieved, which will go back to the historical 40 crore per quarter. Uh, which therefore, I just want to reassure our investors and stakeholders uh, that this Q3 is a temporary one-off situation. We'll come back to what we are as early as this quarter, but what is more important is to, for, for us to focus your attention to our FI25 guidance. Uh, considering that we had reset the business, it is obvious that we have a slightly longer view on our performance for the next year, uh, and based on a stronger order book and reset, playing through the quarters, we expect uh, a quarterly improvement from Q1 on our quality of growth, our mar gross margin expansion, and our profitability and flow through. Importantly for us, our focus is on our balance sheet. Uh, we have also uh, simultaneously announced uh, the firming up of our rights issue. Uh, our bankers have been appointed, and we are waiting for the exchange approvals before the rights, uh, rights issue committee of independent directors will, will be formed, and we will then announce the rights. Additionally, uh, in this avatar, we as promoters are not only subscribing to our rights, but are also willing to underwrite any unsubscribed portion uh, simply because we believe that uh, the post-COVID events leading to, uh, to the poor performance of Solara is not necessarily a long-term situation. Uh, we are very confident of a very strong course correction and a reset, and we are very confident with Purvang and the rest of his leadership team. Uh, we will help deliver these numbers. Uh, so we are now boldly presenting a guidance for FI25, where our focus is actually doubling our EBITDA from Q4 FI24 to our exit run rate in FI25 to double. And we are very strongly uh, focused on portfolio maximization, new market entries, customer acquisitions, cost improvements, and right-sizing of our manufacturing network. Uh, all of this will flow through in, in, a, in a calibrated manner, and a full flow through of that will be visible by Q4. Uh, we will also focus on debt reduction. Uh, we are committed to use most of our right issue proceeds uh, for, for our debt right sizing. We do not intend to spend too much capital on CapEx, as we have significant new capacities that are currently underutilized. So network optimization and capacity utilization will be a key focus of the company, and cost improvement 
to be a cost leader. We are only as good as your cost in the API business, and that will be another function that we will we will focus on. We are not necessarily proud of our two years of R and D flow through in terms of the money we spent to the outcomes we have come, come got out of them. That will be another area of focus where we would uh, focus on very sharper um, R and D spends, uh, and also to revive several of our dormant DMS. The company has got a very significant portfolio of, of, the, of API DMS which are not commercialized and we will now focus on ensuring that we are able to maximize uh, these actions. Part of a reset uh, and leading to, the, leading to the following news that I will in a minute is that we uh, we've quite uh, dispersed as, as leadership teams. Uh, we are spread out in, in Chennai, Bangalore and Hyderabad and uh, consequent to our uh, reset actions, we have decided to shrink our corporate operations between Bangalore and uh, Chennai, which was traditionally our corporate office, uh, and therefore we have decided to close down our Chennai operations. Uh, leading to this decision, unfortunately, we will, uh, Raghavan, who has been our CFO for a very short period of time, who was originally brought in to be based in Hyderabad, has kindly understood the need for our uh, for our actions and have decided to move on from uh, from Solara with uh, and we will make the necessary stock exchange disclosures later in the day. Uh, we do we are now in the process of replacing this critical role. We believe that we have enough internal talent and we will shortly make those announcements. Um, and apart from this. Uh, uh, apart from this, we, we also want to highlight that while uh, we have pro uh, provided for the business losses related to the Pondicherry incident, we are fully covered for business losses through our insurance policies. Uh, none of that potential income has been accrued uh, in, in our statements today, uh, in our P&Ls today. Um, I, I believe I've covered uh, a fairly significant part of our presentation. Um, and I am I I'm not uh, both Pulwank and I am operating from different sites today. Uh, but Pulwank, if you would like to say a few words, and and Raghavendra, I would also, apart from thanking you for your service, uh, would also like to take this opportunity to wish you good luck. But also say a few words on what on your impressions uh, for both Pulwank and Raghavendra before we take up questions. Uh, thank you, Arun. Uh, so, uh, thank you everyone for joining the call today. Um, like Arun already mentioned, I think uh, we have broadly covered all the points together, but uh, I think uh, Q3 2024 has been a difficult quarter for Solara majorly impacted by the fire incident. That's what we spoke about. And this fire incident occurred at our Puducherry facility and resultant fire caused injuries to 14 workers, 12 workers were recovered and discharged while two have succumbed to injuries despite best efforts put to recover them. The fire also caused damage to our existing plant and equipment and inventories. There was disruption in the production at the Puducherry facility for a brief period and post-corrective actions. Permissions to commence production was already accorded by end of December 2023. We resumed supplies to regulated markets in Jan 2024. The losses arising on account of fire incident have been accounted under exceptional items, uh, like Arun rightly pointed out, and the insurance claims have been made and no deferred income is considered in our results. Our uh, revenues have definitely seen a reduction during Q3 2024, majorly impacted by the production disruptions post the fire incident, and intended Shipments for the quarter were deferred to Q4 because we had to do a lot of compliance with respect to CAPA corrective and preventive action, which actually allowed uh, us to comply with the customers and the uh, sales shifted to Q4. And uh, so there, and then of course our gross margins were impacted. One off impact of the reset strategy to discontinue few products and optimize inventory. Uh, one of the most important themes that we, I would also like to emphasize and talk about is about the solar reset strategy, which we are looking at. I think that's the vision over the next four or five quarters on how we deliver on that. And that is something we are actually looking at. 
and we are looking at all the all the parameters very aggressively whether it's in terms of the gross margins improvement wherein we are looking at ebitda per kl improvement where the second part is of course on the network optimization the third is of course on opex reduction through various measures we are so all the measures have been taken into account so that we get back to our historical levels what we spoke about so uh with significant headwinds behind us and with our reset strategy in place we aim to turn around and deliver 20 to 20% ebitda margins by q4 2025 and that's what the plan and we'll aspire to go to that level so thank you for Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Purvan. Thank you, Arun. Uh, I have uh, nothing more to add from the quarter or numbers perspective, uh, but I would like to extend uh, my heartfelt thanks to all of you and the management here at Solara for giving me this opportunity. It's been a short stint, but uh, eventful stint. And my best wishes uh, uh, to Solara as the company embarks on what is uh, for sure an, an exciting journey ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can you take the questions now? Sure, sir. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Vishal Manchanda from Systematics Shares. Please go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I have a question uh, with respect to your guidance. Uh, you are expecting 1,500 crores uh, in top line in FI 25. So, if I kind of adjust the FI 24 numbers for the fire incident, it's uh, from you're probably looking at flat, uh, flattish numbers on a YOY basis. So, uh, if you could explain uh, why why are we not expecting any growth here? Yeah, so uh, we shall thank you for your question. Like I said in my opening statement, our focus for the next four quarters is on margin expansion. Um, growth will come. It's not that we are not seeing new customers and new products. Uh, I I think a lot of the growth in the last two years has come at the cost of margins because we were busy on utilizing all the network that we have. which effectively means we are producing more than what we should be uh, and then we were creating demand which was not necessarily margin focused uh, so the idea is uh, growth will happen in h2 uh, but margin expansion will start almost immediately starting from q1 okay uh, and with respect to the margin expansion that you guided for uh, about uh, 500 basis point margin expansion uh, so will that be an outcome of largely cost savings and not product mix is that how we should read you are right to a large extent there will be cost savings but there will be also a flow through of the cost improvement programs that we have on several pro- products that are ongoing okay uh, so uh, if you could share some so <clears throat> any anything on the Uh, raw material side that you hope to say so gross margin expansion meaningful gross margin expansion that you are expecting here yeah we need to have a meaningful march uh, gross margin expansion of at least 600 basis points for us to increase our ebitda by 6 700 uh, basis points right so we are looking at taking our margins from now uh, in the mid 40s to the closer to the historical 51 52% got it okay uh, thank you that's all from my side thank you very much the next question is from the line of devanshi dave an individual investor please go ahead hi thanks for the opportunity my question is partly answered but uh, i have two questions 
firstly if you could uh, you know please highlight the details of the one off impact of 100 crores and you know what was that related to if you could you know share some clarity on that and uh, secondly on the gross margin side so you know while our gross margins look depressed due to you know provisions and fire have we seen some improvement in the margin given the you know input costs have eased up across the industry and you know why when do we expect it to go back to the 50% uh, gross margin levels that we used to have in the past thanks so the, the individual line items leaning to the 100 crore one off is part of our disclosures and uh, the company will be more than happy to set up time with you to discuss that in more details um coming to your question on gross margins we expect uh, the exit if it uh, to be 20 to 22% in q4 of 25 which is about five quarters from now a little bit less than that uh, the gross margin expansion from the current 42 43% of 44% to 52% will be a gradual process you're right that input costs are eased uh, but by the time we actually solve for our inventories that we have and enjoy the benefits of improved cost uh, cost of goods and also as cost improvement programs flowing through we will not see that happening almost immediately so it will be calibrated q1 q but you will see quarter on quarter growth in gross margins starting from q1 of next year um, and that is that's something that we are very confident of okay okay got it thanks thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of siddhant chaturvedi an individual investor hi everyone uh, uh thanks for the opportunity uh, so i have two questions my first question is on the right issue that how much are we planning to raise in this right issue and what will the funds be primarily used for my second question is on the working capital is uh, what measures are we taking to bring the overall working capital days down and what will be the ideal working capital days for the business yeah so the rights issue uh, approvals the board has, has been taken is up to 450 crores uh, we don't believe we need 450 crores so it will be more like a 350 to 400 crore in that in that uh, zip code uh we are just waiting for our reset plan and the total cash needs to be decided including our debt reduction plan uh, to be decided before we fix the actual number so we should be able to give you that update in the next couple of weeks uh, if you're following us there would be some publications around it um the more, all of all of the rights issue like i said is is none of the rights issue proceeds are going towards anything but to reduce the size of the balance sheet so basically most of it will go to reducing our bank debts that is the idea apart from the cash generating uh the ideal working capital cycle time in this business is between 130 to 150 days we are far away from that because we are holding a lot of inventory and that is why our free cash generation will be higher because we will start releasing a lot of that inventory with all the reset actions we have taken uh and i think uh, by the end of the year next financial year if we get to that 125 to 135 days we will be in a very good spot thank you sir thank you very much the next question is from the line of subrata sarkar from mount infra finance private limited please go ahead hello yeah hello yeah, hi yes hi yeah so uh, sir, my question is precisely two like one is like uh, regarding our right issue the like uh, what i mean to say is like will that entire amount will be repaid uh, back to the uh, just to reduce the debt number one what will number two like what will be our recurring capex because i suppose there won't be any uh, new capex in this uh, time period Uh, for uh, at least a year or so 
so what we what is our recurring capex requirement and what kind of like uh, cash flow we are supposed to generate in next year so that like uh, if we if we raise let's say 300 crore to 400 crore of debt uh, then uh, uh, rest of the cash flow like wh- what we are targeting and how we, uh, what is our plan with that so, uh, so uh, which will help us to be, yeah got it so I would like to emphasize earlier, most of the right issue proceeds will go towards debt reduction uh, because we do not have any need for new capex. Our recurring capex is between 40 to 50 crores per year. Our free cash generation on 250 crores will be including the fact that we do have inventory liquidation plans and so almost be 75% of our EBITDA. So, so we expect almost 150 odd crores of free cash generation next year, which will also accelerate the debt reduction plan. And that's why we are guided for a debt to EBIT of under under three. Ideally, we would be at two and a half. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Rohit Suresh from Samatva Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so I had a question on ibuprofen. Uh, if you could uh, highlight the global scenario right now, what kind of demand are you seeing? The prices have been pretty low uh, last one and a half years. So uh, how do you see that uh, going forward? Can you please speak up? Uh, Rohit sir, can you repeat your question again? Yeah, uh, I'm audible now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so I wanted to know on the ibuprofen part, uh, what I've been reading is that uh, the prices have been pretty low uh, for the past two years. The demand scenario also overall has been pretty uh, on the lower side. Inventories have been on the higher side. Uh, so going forward, do you see this, that we have the, reached the absolute low in terms of prices and inventory? And by when do you see the overall market recovery? Yeah, so you're right that there is uh, there has been a lot of stocking up of ibuprofen globally, especially with big farmers uh, pre-COVID. I think uh, that, uh, therefore, supply was significantly greater than demand. Uh, significant new supply capacities have come into play. Uh, all of this has resulted in a depression of the pricing. So, uh, to some extent, is insulated by the fact that uh, a large part of our business is in the regulated markets, but we do not uh, deny the fact that the competition is intense um, and our overall focus uh, on cost improvements and other actions and onboarding other you know, customers in other geographies is playing through, uh, but it will take time. To answer your specific point, uh, we strongly believe that the pricing has bottomed out, and uh, but I don't think there's going to be the pre-COVID price points on ibuprofen. Our actions for margin expansions is over a lot of other products that we have uh, and through network optimization and other cost control measures. That will, That is the reason why the margin expansions will happen. Great. Sir. So just one, uh, what will be the prices right now for ibuprofen? They blended I was able to make that statement in a public forum. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, sir, and uh, wishing you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Aman Baghel, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah, hi, can you speak up, Aman? Uh, sir, firstly, I would like to offer my condolences to the two stakeholders of Thank you, Aman. To the operator. Uh, so my question is, uh, could you please provide insights into the approach used to develop the forecast for FY25? I'm curious about whether it leans towards a conservative or a aggressive outlook. Well, a reset is always uh, aggressive, uh, but as a group, we have a policy of ensuring we meet our guidances. So you could say that uh, it is it is positioned in a manner that we will deliver these results. Okay, sir. 
Sorry, we lost him. Thank you very much. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, and uh, thank you for your support. Uh, like I said, this has been a difficult quarter, but we are very focused on bringing Solana back to its past glory and appreciate your confidence. And if you have any questions, please do write to Investor Relations or to Abhishek. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Solara Active Pharma Sciences Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.